Hello and welcome to another edition of Theology Prepper, where we look at things from the Bible, from Scripture, and other books that help prepare us to deal with things, sin, Satan, temptation in this life. Um, it's kind of like uh, anything you would do in life, battle, stuff like that. If you know something's coming, a test. Uh, that's something at work a presentation you prepare for it you get yourself ready for it so in christian circles it makes sense that we knowing sin temptation the devil things like that are out there and set to be against us we should be preparing to face those things in doing so we are using the book precious remedies against satan's devices by author puritan thomas brooks uh have that pictured here um, and in this book, he breaks things down for us as to what we face. And we're currently in a section dealing with facing opposition or problems, whatever you want to call it, sins, temptations that would hinder us from our Christian duties, our Christian service. So going to church, prayer, reading the Bible, doing what's right, and things like that. Um, our Christian service, even to one another, um, showing honor and glory unto one another, helping one another. So in this section, he talks about, or he mentions for us, the problem of by casting in vain thoughts while the soul is seeking God or waiting on God. So what is he getting at there? Well, in our Christian duties, in our Christian service, we may be waiting on God for an answer to prayer. We may be in the middle of something where other thoughts start to creep in, right? You know, we get distracted in our thinking sometimes. Um, you ever try to think of something long term, uh, meditations on scripture, things like that. And then all of a sudden, all these things start to bombard your thoughts. And next thing you know, you're off on a rabbit trail or maybe even just your prayer time or Bible study time. You're thinking of a passage, you're working through a passage, you're praying through something and another thought comes at you and you start going off on these tangents um, or maybe even start thinking about unholy things. And so uh, Thomas Brooks gives us some remedies. He's gonna go through these rather quick. They're seven, but they're simple, they're direct, they're to the point. And uh, so he tells us our remedies or for the remedies we should consider first the God with whom we have to do is great, holy, majestic, and glorious. So when you start entertaining certain temptations for your mind to wander or other thoughts to creep in that maybe aren't so pure and holy, think of who you're talking to. Think of who you're, you're working with at that point in time, who's around you. You know, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth heaven and earth, uh, the one who has saved you, given up his only begotten son for your sake, nailing your sins in his son's cross that you might be saved. Reflect on how glorious God is in that does he have your full attention? Does he have your full respect, honor, and glory at the moments and times that you're praying to him, thinking about him, uh, fasting maybe and wanting a response of some sort from God? Is, is the true God at the center of who you're dealing with? You know, calling attention to who God is in our thoughts will help focus our thoughts on what it is we're asking of him or looking to him for. Two, despite wandering thoughts, it is needful to be resolute in religious service. So a very simple point. So even if your thoughts are wandering, even if you're not sure, maybe you don't have a warm fuzzy about what you're doing or you know, going to church that day or helping a friend in need, uh, especially a Christian friend, maybe even in Sunday school or something like that, uh, you hear about a need and you feel like, well, maybe I should help him. Our religious duty is to do these things. That, that's why it's a duty at times. Uh, your chores as a farmer, you know, they need to be done. You may not feel like getting out of bed all the time, but you need to do them or the farm fails. Um, so, so 
your duty above how you feel sometimes doing what's right above what you just you know I don't really feel like that today well do it anyway get to work uh, three vain and trifling thoughts that Satan casts into our souls are not sins if they are abhorred resisted and disclaimed so as those things, those thoughts, those ideas, the things from the past, whatever come at you, just be ready for them. Shield yourself, cast them away, refocus and reorient your mind back on things above, back on things of the spirit. Uh, they're, they're not sins when they're just temptations. When you start entertaining it and playing with it, then that's where you start to go from temptation into sins of the mind, sins of omission, things like that. Fourth, watch against, resist, and lamenting sinful thoughts and evidences, er, sinful thoughts, evidences grace and sincerity of our hearts. So when you're able to repel these things, draw your mind and focus back to Christ. That's evidence of God's grace, mercies, and all that at work in you already. So then be like, oh my gosh, I'm having these thoughts again. Well, that you're recognizing that should be a key indicator. God is working in your heart and mind to recognize that. And why? Well, because in five, we must labor to be filled with the fullness of God and enriched with all spiritual blessings. So the, the intake of who God is and what he's done. So it, I think of it, the old, old illustration of, of uh, those who look for counterfeit money. We have pens and fancy things that try to tell us that nowadays and security strips. But in the olden days, you know, printed paper was just printed paper. And the way to recognize a counterfeit was to study the originals so well that counterfeits just stood outside of that. You didn't try to study all the different types of counterfeiting. You just knew the originals so well that when you saw a counterfeit bill or coin or whatever, you just knew something wasn't right and you could pinpoint, yeah, this shouldn't be here. These lines aren't quite the right angle and things like that. So we fill ourselves so much with God's word, prayer, study, meditation, things like that, that when things come out us, that aren't in line with God's will, God's word, we recognize them. And then six, you know, mirrors that says we must labor to keep up holy and spiritual affections. Uh, again, the love of God and his word will help us to f uh, foster these types of this type of diligence towards God and study and prayer and focus. The, the more you work at it, the more that love, the more those feelings will accompany those things because you'll start to recognize more and more how diligent you are at them and recognizing them. So, so it's kind of a, a an either or right if you stay away from the bible and god's word because you let those thoughts take you off in those directions those thoughts and things are going to keep you from god's word or the opposite the more you just push that stuff off and stay in god's word you'll be able to push off that stuff more and more because you're so focused on God and his word and his will and the things that are pleasing unto him. So one of those two things is going to take over in you. And, you know, there'll always be the tension to be between the two. Um, in this life, you know, there, we have indwelling sin. And unfortunately, that's not going to leave us until we, until we pass into glory and it's done away with. But while we're here, we do have that tension. And we need to be aware of it, and we need to be purposefully bent towards our holy service towards God. Which, in seven, uh, is a reminder we must labor to avoid multiplicity of worldly business. And this is just simply the world's going to get faster and faster. Thoughts are going to come at you quickly, uh, if you're, especially if you're watching TV. You're being bombarded with story, narrative, characters, um, um, uh, social narratives, especially in our day and age. You know, all these things are going to come at commercials all of a sudden, and you're just going to be bombarded with information. Um, it shows even you know TV shows sitcoms news stories all that kind of stuff uh, they're not simply 
you know, a story anymore. They're not simply facts anymore. There's a nuance or a narrative being carried by all these different things. And in doing so, the world keeps compounding them more and more and more because it knows if it can hammer you with its information, you're going to go in its direction. And that's why Thomas Brooks here is encouraging us that regardless of those things and regardless of our feelings, stay true to Christian duty and service. Keep our minds on things above. Be diligent to pray, to, to study, read your Bible on a regular basis. And these things will, by the hope and guidance of the Holy Spirit, be at work in you. And although you may have that tension of, wow, this fight is still going on, just recognizing the fight, just like Romans 7 for Paul, you'll be able to say, well, thanks and glory be to God who will deliver me from this body of death one day, but I will serve him. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. It ran even a little bit longer than I thought, I'm trying to get through these quickly, but there were seven. So, But anyway, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you next time. God bless.